And I believe we're live. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, Facebook Live viewers. Hello, Somerville Community Access Television viewers. I am very pleased to be joined with uh, Kathy Piantagini, who is the director of libraries at the Somerville Public Library and all its various branches. Um, and we are here to uh, allow her a chance to kind of spotlight what the library is doing uh, while it's closed. Uh, library services are still up and running, obviously not the libraries themselves, the physical mm -hmm. buildings. Um, so why don't I just uh, welcome to you, Kathy, and why don't I let hey. you take, take this over? Okay. Um, well, as many of you know, um, our facilities are closed right now um, and will remain closed throughout um, at least the beginning of May. We're um, mimicking the, the public schools in that regard. Um, um, and in the meantime, we are working really hard behind the scenes on creating a really strong online presence um, through all of our social media platforms and our website. Um, we have a very active Facebook page. We have a Twitter account and we also have an Instagram page. And um, we're also doing blog updates on the website and updating um, information about COVID-19. Um, which is basically us linking to what the city's providing um, because they have such a good page with um, really good resources on it. Yeah, and so uh, you you were saying uh, as we were we were talking beforehand uh, that the that you're getting some questions, especially about uh, library books and mm -hmm. and uh, overdue library books and that yes. sort of. So, uh, what should people know about that? Well, they should know not to worry about any of it. Um, we have been fielding questions daily from um, people sending emails about books that they have at home right now that are overdue. And what we're telling our patrons is please do not worry about it. You can keep the material at your home. Um, when the libraries are open again and we're able to accept the returns, um, everything will be backdated so you won't owe a fine on it. Um, there are some people who had items that were on hold for them just before we closed down and that the status of those materials um, are also frozen at this time, which is a good thing because what it means is when we're up and running again, um, we're going to have a couple of days for people to start coming back and picking up the things that were on hold just as we were being closed. Um, which is, you know, really interesting because we did have a few patrons who, you know, had been waiting eagerly for like a book and it had just come up on hold and they were concerned they were going to lose it. And oh, so, no. yeah, but, um, that shouldn't be the case. And, um, and this is actually not just Somerville. It's an effort through the Minuteman library network of which we're one of over 40 libraries. So, you know, in addition to, um, doing a lot of collaboration and conversations through the city with other city departments. The library also were in close contact with um, our central site location and then other area public libraries just to talk to one another about the kinds of programs and services that we're, that we're all offering. Everyone's pretty much doing a similar thing. Um, there were a couple of public libraries in the beginning that were offering like curbside pickup before um, people realized the importance of really trying to limit the exposure. Um, and so I, I'm not sure if all of that has stopped or not. It's kind of a case by case thing, but um, 
uh, it has been recommended that that library stop doing that. Mm, yeah, that, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, and this is forcing not only libraries, but other sort of uh, uh, institutions that have a lot of interaction uh, to, to use uh, tools like we're using, like Zoom meeting, yeah. uh, tools like Facebook and Instagram as ways uh, you know, those are usually social media, secondary kind of interaction mm -hmm. uh, points, touch points, uh, and they've quickly became uh, quickly become the the primary ones. Um, and can you talk about uh, like specifically how you're how you're pr uh, interacting with library page patrons and inviting mm -hmm. inviting participation in that way? Sure. Um, so you know, as you can imagine, I. I expect, well, I suspect it was kind of like this on your end too. We needed um, a couple of days to kind of get all our ducks in a row and um, take care of all the really immediate and pressing needs, which were mostly to make sure everybody knew that we weren't, the buildings weren't open. And then um, how do we set up a working remote schedule and how are we keeping in touch with colleagues and coworkers and that sort of thing. And then once we got the hang of that, um, we immediately started thinking about, well, how can we start engaging with our patrons? How, what are some of the programs that we're offering at the library that um, we can use this technology for? And of course, the very first thing that came to mind were the story times. Um, so this week, we actually started with um, using Facebook Live um, mimicking our story time schedule as it was before we closed. So Allison Mitchell, who is the children's librarian for the West Branch, she started her regular story time up again on Facebook Live this past um, Tuesday. And then Anne Cassesso, the children's librarian at the main library, she offered her first one yesterday. And they were both really well received. They lasted approximately a half hour, a little bit longer. They included songs and stories. Um, they both seem to have a really great fun time doing it. And um, from what I saw, the feedback was really positive. Um, when we look back on the, the views and the engagement, it was um, higher than I expected it to be. Um, so the word definitely got out, which is great. Facebook Live has been amazing. Um, and then for my part, uh, just before we started rolling out the story times for the, with the children's librarians, um, I'm still coming into work. That's where I am right now. I'll usually stop by most days just to check the book drop, um, see what's going on. I sometimes find it helpful to do work from here just because there are less distractions um, and nobody's in the building. So I feel like that is safe. Um, and um, at any rate, I bring my dog Rocky with me, as you know, cause you saw him before he pooped out on the chair next to me, <laughs> but, um, I started reading some picture books to him. So a couple of times I did it at home and then, um, so most days now I'll sit here for a couple of minutes and we'll do it. And what I've been doing for that is using my iPhone, recording it as a video, hoping it's not too big, uploading it to Instagram, um, if the Wi-Fi connection is strong, which it is strong here actually, which is great, I can upload it to Facebook with no issues. And so it's not live, but it's a recorded story time. And um, those have been really hilarious and have also, um, I think people have found them engaging. So, and then just today we were talking about um, the potential for doing like an adult program with like kind of a sing-along piano bar like theme. Um, I know some people who um, play piano that are like into Billy Joel and, you know, really good sing-along musicians and songs. And so uh, just today we started working out what that would look like where we would use Facebook live, um, create an event, invite people to it, like to go in at a certain time. And then hopefully all of us are singing along and, and having a good time. So that's great. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, and the, the whole reason that I reached out to you last week was, was about your reading, uh, 
to Rocky videos yeah. and uh, just the, the appeal that that has, uh, you know, obviously nothing repl can replace face-to-face -face interaction with people. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that what, what you're doing by reading to, to your dog, Rocky, it was just so, so human and so tender. And it was kind of exactly what everybody needed last week. Oh, uh, good. I'm so <laughs> glad. He brings um, me a lot of joy and the children's books also bring me a lot of joy. And I, I actually miss reading them um, as much as I used to, but personally for me, I'm equally mortified and entertained at like the same time <laughs> where every day I'm like, Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then I'm like, yeah, this is like really fun. So yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was so great. Yeah. Cool. Um, Thank you. I wanted to also ask about um, movies. Uh, I know mm. you all, uh, uh, have that ability with Canopy, I believe is That's the service right. that you all use. Uh, can you can you describe to uh, somebody who has an account with mm -hmm. the Somerville Public Library how how to utilize Canopy to be able to see movies? Sure. So uh, all you need is um, your library card. So um, a service like Canopy is attached to um, Somerville resident library cards which means if you um, live in Somerville and your library is your library card is hooked into the Somerville system, you have access to all of the databases and resources that the Somerville library pays for to provide to its residents. And, um, and if you don't have a library card, um, it is possible for you right now to apply for a temporary card, which also grants access to those services. Um, I, don't think that was the case before, but now that um, a lot of the public libraries are being closed for this extended period of time, a change was made um, on the back end of it and the network so that people could start having access to these databases um, with the temporary card. So Canopy is one of them. It's a, I, do you use Canopy? Have you ever logged on? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I do have a Minuteman card. So I okay. think that provides an extra challenge for somebody like me uh, yeah, and not yeah. a specific Somerville card. No, it's fine. Minuteman's fine. Okay. If you have your Somerville address and stuff on your Minuteman card, you can just use it to log into Canopy. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. And then what's great about Canopy is it's, um, it's similar to Netflix, but um, the content is really focused on like, Mm, award-winning indie um art house like really unique titles things that you're not going to see on netflix um so it's like a nice complement to the other services that are paid services um and right now you can have 10 uh streams for free which um is pretty good they also offer movies for kids and families and that actually um I don't remember the exact specifics of it, but I think you log into that once and then you have, I want to say almost like unlimited access and that, that view to watch different family things. Um, what I should say is if you have any questions about, if anyone has any questions about the databases, um, you can always email us through the summervillepubliclibrary.org website. The one email that I, um, give you direct access to our staff is some refs. Oh no. Yes. It's some refs at minlib.net. Um, but you can also, it's easier just to go to the website and, and find us there. Um, we also have access to overdrive, um, which, which is a great resource for eBooks. Um, and things like viewing magazines, if you have a tablet or a device at home that can accommodate it, um, and Hoopla, which is another online database that is good for eBooks and audiobooks. Um, okay. Yeah. So the, our public, our patrons are really leaning on those three in particular right now. But you can also view the newspapers through our databases, and um, there's really a lot you can do without actually being here in the library. So there's a lot of uh, of connecting to uh, books, newspapers, movies, mm -hmm. audiobooks uh audiobooks did you mention yeah. that yeah yep. Uh, yep. through these through these various databases mm -hmm. that you have access to that one would have access to with their somerville public library card yes so and that's, that's why we have so many people now that are asking for cards which i love 
It's like, hooray. Um, so so that, that's a good point. So if somebody doesn't have a card, mm -hmm. how do they, how do they, how do they get one in this, uh, in this closed state? Well, if you have access to email, and I hope you do, an inter internet connection and um, the ability to send us an email, our circulation head is checking those every day, multiple times a day. And so um, we'll get, we'll field them that way and issue them remotely. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's all, that's all great. And we touched a little bit on, on programming. I know everybody's and, and, you know, you might not have an answer for, for how you're approaching this just yet. Cause I know we're, we're working on how we're approaching mm -hmm. programming as well over at Somerville media center. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, can you touch on, on uh, any sort of programs that you have been able to adapt to zoom uh, besides the ones that you've already mentioned, the, the, the reading programs, not only you read to Rocky, but the children's mm -hmm. story time. Um, is there anything else in it that people could look out for? Well, Zoom for us is a, is going to be a new um, thing to try out. So right now, I'm using it to communicate with library staff. Um, that's why I'm really excited to see you using it now because I'm assuming this is going to sh show up on Facebook. It's on Facebook right now. Oh my God, amazing! <laughs> um, so I, I definitely want to do that because it's it will be so much easier. I think. Um, so I may need to talk to you later just to see if, you know, how that goes. And um, we have a nice team of librarians that um, aren't, you know, with me now, but um, Melinda and Meg, who um, are doing a lot of coordinating on our end to, to see what we can do for social media engagement and, and what other info we can put out. Um, Melinda, for example, she, while we're working really hard on things that we're content, we're creating and pushing out, we're also still getting a lot of information that we're trying to push out about the census, um, mm. and other like topics that aren't directly related to the library. And so she's always eager to get links from other library staff, um, for things that we can share. So yeah, the census, that's an important one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think they're they're doing a huge effort to drive people to the census website. Yeah, uh, you can fill out the census uh, entirely there. Yep. Uh, no filling out of physical forms or mailing them in. No, that's how I did it this year. Oh, yeah. Very I got the I got the mailing. I think it was like a postcard. I can't remember now, but went right in and did it, and it was great. It took a couple minutes, and um, but the Census Bureau is working really closely with public libraries, um, and also towns. We Somerville has a complete count committee um, where many library department, not just the library, but many city departments are working together on it to engage as many people as possible in Somerville. Um, you know, especially people that, you know, don't come to the library, like really specialized groups and organizations. Um, you know, it almost feels very grassroots in that, that way. And um, I find that I'm learning a lot about the process myself. Um, and it, it, there's a lot to it. Mm. What but other, easy as pie for people to actually do it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, good, good. That's good to know for somebody like myself who hasn't done it, that it's really easy as pie, but I do plan <laughs> to do it this week. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to check back with you on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, are there any uh, uh, other types of burning questions that you're getting from, uh, from the public from patrons. Uh, I know we had mentioned, you know, library return dates, which, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you all have, have fixed. Um, is there any sort of like top three other questions that you're getting from people? So funny. Not really. A lot of it is very immediate, you know, like how should I be worrying about my materials? Um, will my holds be there for me? And, you know, how can I access things remotely from home? Those are the big ones. And then we actually are still trying to field reference questions, which we're getting through email. Um, Kevin O'Kelly, our head of reference, has been here a few times when it's um, been just him doing some research on local history information to get back to people. Um, someone on the West Coast who needed something, and we were the only library that had it available. And um, so that stuff's still happening, which is great. Uh, it's nice to be able to kind of focus on things that aren't immediately related to, you know, 
COVID-19 and, and staying home and that sort of thing. So that's been a nice distraction and I'm glad they keep coming in. And then otherwise, I, I really think it comes down to all of us wanting to be together somehow, you know, mm, like um, yeah. being able to see you right now and us talking. I felt that way about engaging my staff when I use Zoom um, the other day for the first time to check in with my department heads. Um, I think patrons and residents are looking for that now, too. We have... Um, a volunteer, uh, her name's Maida, who has organized this weekly craft um, group that was meeting here at the library uh, for over a year. And then all on her own and with her, um, the other people who go to the group, she's using Zoom for the craft group. So they have this small group of people who, like, let's say there's seven of them. They book time for maybe an hour or two and they sit together and are doing exactly what they would have been doing together but remotely which is great and um there was one oh we have um a librarian marita at the east branch who has a book group and they have been checking in with each other um via email which i think is so awesome yeah and she's thinking about using zoom as a way to get them together to you know talk about whatever book it is that they're talking about right now. So basically all cards are on the table. You know, we're willing to do anything, think about anything, um, try anything. That, that's uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. This is yeah. A, a new, this is a new world, a new way mm -hmm. of interacting that very few people foresaw, you know, a month ago <laughs> that we would be here. I, I love also how, how zoom, uh, allows something for like it looks like that disco ball you're you're balancing it on your head oh like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> my halo <laughs> and Donna and see, halo. <laughs> <laughs> seeing the insides of people's apartments and mm -hmm. people's uh, offices you know uh, again there's no substitute for for face-to-face -face interaction but it is a, yeah. a very a very human thing to want to see people in their yeah. environments in this way it's really interesting right now i have to say i do miss seeing everybody um i really it's really something to be in this library when nobody else is in it because any other day i'd be hearing doors closing like the bathroom toilets flushing like the teenagers all scrambling in after school like you know it's just so lively yeah. and it's a completely different place when when the doors are closed so and then um, you had mentioned like some of the the information that you're you're uh, getting from other libraries and similar mm -hmm. institutions. Um, what's what's and I know I'm putting you on the spot with this question, uh, but what's the biggest challenge overall for libraries at at this moment? Um, I think it's that communication. I've spoken to a couple of library directors, and we we're feeling the same way. You know. So you, it's hard when you're not working together, you know, you kind of take it for granted. Um, so figuring out how to keep connected to your coworkers, um, keeping people engaged, it, it comes down to really missing the face-to-face -face interaction. And then how do you kind of work with that and turn it mm -hmm. around a little bit? Um, that seems like it's the bigger challenge now. I think two weeks ago, it probably was more about, um, you know, protecting ourselves from book returns or, you know, how are we going to shelve things and, you know, really like into the minutia of um, disinfecting this or that. But now um, I don't think I, that doesn't seem to be as much of an issue. Um, although that said, you know, it's still a concern, meaning social distancing, like constantly washing hands like when I am in here handling materials from the book drop because they have to be picked up and put someplace you know I do make sure to wash my hands and that sort of thing but the focus I feel like has shifted like that's what we were talking about a week or two weeks ago now what we're talking about is you know how are we getting out there to our patrons and how are we staying together as like a team right Right. And uh, yeah, the team building uh, uh, capabilities of technology like this is uh, mm -hmm. it's, 
it's it's important. Yeah, like yeah. we were starting off with conference calls, and then uh, it yeah once we once we got on on this technology uh, and we were able to see everybody's faces uh, on a day to day basis, you know that that made a difference. I um, agree. <laughs> and uh, it, it, where's Rocky now? My God, he's <laughs> sleeping. This poor thing. Anytime I want him to be like doing a thing. He doesn't want to do it, but look here. Uh, he's like, Wait, why did you wake me up? <laughs> and so what are you reading to Rocky right now? <laughs> he's literally falling backwards into my lap because, <laughs> well, last night I tried, I don't have the book with me, but I tried to read um, Kitten's First Full Moon by Kevin Henkes and got through about two pages of it. And then he just walked away from me oh. and stuck his nose in the pillow and he fell asleep. But um, is that some sort of review on his part? Like, I if hope he not, because the book is really good. It's one of my favorites. But um, yeah, he's. It's funny when you read to kids. A lot of kids who are like two and three years old, it isn't that much different. Like <laughs> when you're trying to hold like the attention, Rocky's attention. You're like, come on, buddy, come on, you can do it. But um, he's such a lovely dog. Oh my. God, I wish you were over here right now, actually, because uh, now I'm just, he's on my lap and I'm just kind of uh, flopped down on me. I know. But anyway. And what are, what are you reading uh, personally right now? Oh my gosh. Um, so I just finished, I actually really like dystopian uh, novels. <laughs> so a part of me like oh. it has this experience every day where I'm like, wow, a lot of this is like in a lot of the books I've read these feelings and stuff. But, um, I just finished the handmaid's tale by Margaret Atwood. I hadn't read that. And, um, part of the reason why I read it was because I had an opportunity to see her speak at the Academy of, um, arts and sciences back in, it was supposed to be mid-March. Mm -hmm. but the event was canceled. So that was too bad. Um, my upstairs neighbor, Daphne Calate wrote um, her latest novels called the blue hours. And I just finished that and it was wonderful. Uh, not dystopian. That's more, um, fi just fiction. Um, and a lot of it takes place in like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and the United States over the course of, um, 20 years about mm -hmm. friendships. And um, I just started this book called Find Me, which um, I ordered it from Porter Square Books um, to pick up so I would have something at home. And that is dystopian. And the mm. whole thing that interested me in it was there was this, some epidemic that was sweeping the country and people were losing their memory. And I was like, okay, I'm on it. And then I started, I started to read it and it turns out the main character like lived in East Somerville. I had no idea. Oh, so right. random. So there was did a they know, shadow. Did they know Marita? No, she hasn't come <laughs> up in the book yet. I don't know. So um, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, the main character grew up like in Charlestown and then lived in Somerville for a while. And now is like in the middle of the country in a hospital. Oh, wow. Somewhere. Wow. And what about you? I know.